Welcome back to the craziest workshop in Alabama. This is Alex, and today we have a Sunbeam T20-B made from 1952 to 1957. This unit is in fairly good condition. It was a yard sale find, and the chrome appears to be in decent condition. And I tried a test spot for polishing yesterday, and I think it'll polish up just about like new. So, one cool thing about this, this is the original cord to the T20B. If you see a rubber cord on one of these, it's a later model. So, as you can see, even the plug says Sunbeam. Now, sadly, because of the way that's like that, I'm going to be replacing this cord with a new old stock. Unfortunately, it won't say Sunbeam, but it will look the part and have the correct asbestos insulation. And we'll use all safety practices when stripping and preparing the asbestos wire. So, the information can be found here. T20B, United States. A little bit of caution information. And it looked like somebody was trying to cook some kind of raw dough in here. I don't know if you can see that. But there's a cake of something on that particular um, rack. So there's a little bit of rust. We're going to wire wheel some of that off. But we're not going to go crazy on the inside. Um, it is, uh, I believe, nickel plated, if I'm not mistaken. And I, it was missing one screw and washer. And I had one, but it was in brass. So it's just going to have to be that way. The, I'm sure, I think this is Bakelite, uh, thermoplastic if not Bakelite. So, the lettering back here isn't that great. Neither is the sunbeam on that side. So, I'm going to attempt to use a silver marker to repair that. So, if I can get this into the light a little better... That's what I talked about. It looked like somebody cooked some raw cookie dough. And that's after I flaked a whole bunch of it off. So once the shell's removed, I'm going to polish the shell itself. And I'm going to check a spot on the bottom here and see if that'll polish up a little bit. I've got a different rouge and wheel, specifically for thermoplastics and Bakelite. So anyway, that's going to be today's restoration um, as far as watch check goes orient maestro nothing vintage today just a vintage look so, all right we're going to go ahead and start tearing this down and I'm gonna do it in the house because it is so hot outside all right looking around I could not find the new old stock cord that looked proper for the uh, toaster here. All I had that was in perfect condition was this brown one and brown with the chrome and black I didn't like it so I'm gonna compromise and I have this antique cotton covered wire here and I think that'll look pretty good. Um, I've already washed it uh, tend the tips. I put a new old stock plug polarized because I prepped it for the toaster and I'm going to go ahead and polarize it for the hot side to be the switch side neutral to be your elements and everything so when you put your hands down in here and it's unplugged you can't get electrocuted. Um, you don't ground these because if you were to ever have it turned on and get contact and then touch the outside you get a shock through your heart and that can be pretty dangerous I've survived dozens of shocks but I don't know if everyone could 
So we're just going to polarize it. That's all you really need to do. Grounding is completely unnecessary. Using rubber wire is completely unnecessary. Um, this uh, old cotton wire here has two layers of cotton inside and it easily passes the 180 degree test which is what you want to see as the original at 180 degrees did not pass the test now I could probably put a new plug on here but since the new plug will say Sunbeam what's the point in keeping this dirty old cord that's honestly not in the best shape so we'll go ahead and start disassembly which turn the toaster over open the crumb tray actually we'll take the crumb tray off first you just need a normal slotted screwdriver for this Your screws without washers go on this side, and screws with washers go on this Bakelite or thermoplastic side. I haven't figured out which one it is yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out soon enough. It was, like I said, missing one screw, so I replaced it with this brass 832, which seems to be thread standard at the time. So, alright. And... We need to, I'm going to put this in dead center. This is your uh, lightness darkness adjustment. I'm just going to ease that on off here. Very gently. You don't want to break it. Alright, we've got two small screws here. Keep in mind I've never taken apart a toaster. Not one of these anyway before. That's the crumb tray, and I'm just going to gently wire wheel some of this heavier rust out. Um, I don't want to take off too much of the nickel plating, and it's a toaster. You don't expect the inside to look like a hospital. We're going to put that to the side, and once you get to that point, you have to pick your cord up, just like that, and then you lift that. So... Five sixteenths inch nut driver, and it has part of the case actually crimps to create a strain relief for the wire. So I'm going to have to undo that without breaking it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this disassembled, and we'll we'll get back with the case off and the old wire removed with the old wire removed you can see originally they used little ring terminals formed with wire with a like a crimped eyelet and you can see the asbestos insulation which is really cool and this small exposure is not going to do me any harm Usually you have to work in a shipyard or a mechanic around antique brake dust to have any problems with asbestos. But definitely don't put this in your blender and snort it. That's not good because once this stuff's in your lungs, it pretty much stays there and accumulates. And you get enough of it, it'll lead to mesothelioma, among some other issues. So, I kind of hate to not reuse the original cord. The... But that's just not going to fly with me. I'm going to hold on to the original cord in case I find like a new old stock sunbeam plug that I can put somewhere up here and see if this washes out because that's supposed to be black and white, not black and orange. That's uh, probably from cigarette tar. So 
looks like it's held together with a uh, quarter inch nut screws and appears to be supposed to be eight of them but it appears two are missing up here so I'm just going to tap those for 632 machine screws and swap them out so there should be eight two here two here two here two here but it's missing apparently here Screws have a little bit of rust, so I'll probably clean those up a little bit. So go ahead and take off one side panel. And I don't want to scratch these, so I'm going to set them off to the side over here. But you can see the inside's actually pretty good. I'm just going to wash that and then polish these sides. I did notice here there was some black spotting and that's not going to polish out so the toaster's going to have a little bit of patina but overall I think we're going to have about 98-99% conditioned chrome so that will be a very very nice thing so of course I missed the screw this one right here stuff inside of the shell pretty good condition just gonna wash that and then I'll polish the entire thing while it's off and inside here you can see that there is more than surface rust I'm gonna have to wire wheel this and be very careful with the um, alignment here but overall, it doesn't appear to be in terrible condition. So, what's probably causing it to malfunction is highly likely just going to be the tension screw right here on the bottom. And for these, you turn them out left for more tension. And then right for more tension. That's what I was told. Which makes sense. So. This actually has too much tension. It shouldn't be coming up that fast. That could be one of the reasons why it toasts for about two seconds. And that's too sloppy. Okay, so lefty does make it tighter, right makes it looser. Alright, that feels pretty slick right there. One cool bit of information, so the toast doesn't just go back down every time it comes back up. Once this triggers, it sets this off and when it comes back up so when it comes back up it keeps it from dropping the toast again just like that actually notice I need to probably put a little more tension on that just a hair So I'm going to get to work on some of the cosmetics, um, primarily in just right here, because on the inside where the elements and everything are at, and majority of all the surfaces are in above excellent condition. So um, I'll wire away a little bit of this off, 
and I'm at the wire wheel pretty heavy right there so I may slip these guide wires out just to make sure I don't tear them up so it looks like they bend over so if you open it up that way Now that wire is tempered, I just noticed that, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to take these out. So I'm going to put this back together and just be really careful, but the wires being tempered is going to help with uh, cleaning that up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and make sure you don't touch this. Because if you do, you're going to have to be calibrating your uh, lightness, darkness setting all over again. So I'll be back in just, just a bit. Okay, so I decided to bring you out here with me and just give you an idea of what I'm doing. See, I've already wire wheeled this section and that section, and I'm going to start on the center. So I had some practice getting around these little wires without breaking them. So I also hit a couple of places where there was some heavy rust. Uh, you have to be very gentle because everything on here is extremely fragile. Or finicky, I should say. So, next thing we're going to do is finish that center top part. And I'm going to do that with the hand dremel. holding the toaster in a way and against my body that gives me more control. I normally I'd sit down for this, but I'm making a video for you guys. I just figured it'd be easier to stand up. And every now and then clean your wire wheel on a vitrified stone. That'll get the old rust and grease and stuff out. Now we're not looking to make this shiny, I'm just getting rid of as much of the build up crusted dust as possible so it'll stop propagating so badly. Now that it's going to be in the house, um, the rust probably won't get any worse. And I may decide to use a high, very 1000 degree rated clear coat on this, we'll see. See the difference? And then sometimes if your hand gets fatigued, it's good to switch up hands.
Okay. The steel is stained, but the rust is off. So next step is going to be to start polishing the casing. Oh, um, I'll also take a video of redoing the strain relief and tapping these holes for uh, 632 screws. Okay, for uniformity's sake, I've decided since I have a ton of 632 screws, I'm just going to go ahead and tap all eight of these holes for the same thread. That way, whoever works on them in the future won't have to guess which screws go where. And this is just a standard um, run-of-the-mill Irwin Hansen tap and die set this came out of. So, nothing expensive. Just very decent tap and die set. So when you go to do this side, watch this uh, asbestos insulated wire so you don't run the tap into it and make a hole. Even by the 1950, sheet metal screws are were self-tapping usually, and a lot cheaper than machine screws, such as the ones I'm replacing the sheet metal screws in here with. So that's why you see these those cheap sheet metal screws in something American made from the 1950s. It didn't really affect any performance. I believe that's all eight of them. It is. So that's all eight of those, and we'll be replacing them with these brass 632s. And you know what? I don't think the dome heads are going to be quite right, so I've got something else. I have these countersinking brass 632 screws as well. And I think they'll leave the room for the... They sure will. Head doesn't stick out any further than the original uh, nut driver head. And just in case, I do have the hex head 632 screws I can use on here if needed. So that's that part finished. Everything looks pretty good. No rust cakes anywhere anymore. So, all right, we'll move to the next step. All right, I went ahead and used the 
wire wheel on the Dremel to get all the rust off of here and to put a little polish on the bottom. So no rust, full rust here and here. So all that's left are stains in the steel, which is fine. Plus side to having rough busted hands, you can do stuff like this. You can probably break your fingernail, a normal person. So there's most of the tape, and I'm gonna go ahead and get some mineral spirits. I could probably burn this off with the wheel, but I don't want some tape residue in my buffing wheel. Finish this side that I'd already started on. Back. You know what, though, I want to go horizontal one time to hit these lines. And then we'll go back to vertical. Yep, see how it cleaned those uh, channels out? Both of these are 1750 RPM and run 8 inch wheels. Now why do I do it that way? Well, the 8 inch wheel gives me a lot more access and the 1750 RPM helps control how hot something gets. If I were doing this at 3450 on an 8 inch wheel, I couldn't do this bare handed. I'd have to have on some leather gloves. Be careful on your buffing wheel because it'll catch like that. Now, luckily, I got it before it gouged anything. But you got to be real careful, and not talking while you're doing this can be very helpful.
about getting there. burn through the chrome and that's definitely not what you want to do with chrome plate. Because if you have to send this out for re-chroming, you're talking over a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. I don't know what it costs because they'll have to take the old chrome off too. We're gonna get these channels now. Now the wheel is gonna grab while I'm doing this. Uh, so I'm being holding it real tight. That almost was like dressing your mop because it, it cut a lot of fibers off. So now what I'm gonna do is just pull it on the top. test spot and make sure it's not going to burn this thermoplastic or bake light or whatever it is. Um, if you burn burn it, it's never going to look right. Um, you can sand it and polish it, but it just never looks like a factory. So I'm going to do a spot where you're not going to be able to see it too well, just to see how it's going to do. And I think that'll do just fine. So the key is with this stuff is to keep it from getting hot. And with something this fragile, you want to make sure you try not to get near any edges that you can catch. Because that's going to be almost impossible.
using a brown Tripoli. It's a bit more aggressive, but I'm not using, I'm not leaving it on the wheel long enough to actually um, make any more. So I'm not letting it get hot enough. So see the results. on this wheel when I do this and there's no point really in polishing the whole bottom I'm just going to hit this big spot right here now you catch your wheel starting to string out like that um, be extra careful because it could wrap around what you're working on and even a slower wheel like this one at 1750 rpm it'll snatch that right out of your hand and if this thing gets slung onto the floor it's not going to survive just physics a little out careful you can preserve the paint that's in the recesses that's another reason just take your time and try to enjoy the process if you can because think about the end result you're going to have a toaster that's ready to work for another 70 years and look good doing it so it's essentially what we have Got the parts washed with regular dishwasher detergent and they're gonna dry while we come over here and get started on the guts of the toaster so I've got this high temperature up to 500 Fahrenheit none of the toasters can exceed that but this is a drying lubricant so we're gonna look for any joints that have movement Say there, there, there,
helping to keep the oil off the bimetallic area. Very smooth. So I'm going to turn it over. And turn it this way. And I'm going to take the steel collar from the original line wire. Steel collar can go right here. All right, and it's got a notch in it, that's why we're reusing it. the notch up with the original strain relief area that's pressed in quite well I'm just very carefully pin these back over perfect so what I'll do is just simply couple of loops because I've already tinned the ends of these wires That's two washers. One washer here. Correctly, these were five sixteenths. Nice and snug. Got one here. And that's it. That's the uh, new power wire. Nice uh, antique cotton style. Twist on the end here. So we try to crimp this down just a little bit more. Okay, now it doesn't move. Okay. Nice and tight. So we need to flip this over. Examining everything, and what we want to do is test it. And be extremely careful. In fact, if you're not used to being around electrical items, I would not test it 
in this fashion. I'm just grabbing the piece of post. We're going to see that the tension and the five metallics and everything function. Post goes down. Elements are heating up. So the toast is rising too soon, so I'm going to unplug it, take the toast out, and grab the cool area. And this is going to be an issue. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is look at this. And left is darker. So we're going to have to actually turn this. And I'm going to go about that far and see how it works. And we don't touch any of the metal parts. So. All four elements are heated. Here's what went too far on the dark, so I'm going to keep moving it over. And I'll go ahead and get this configured properly, and we'll do the last part of the video, which is assembly. Alright, now is assembly time. And we'll start with the side panels. The reason I'm doing it upright is because I just got done getting it tuned in and it's extremely hot. So, definitely never work on them when they're hot. But, I've got a limited window that I can have all this stuff out on the counter. Remember, I tapped everything for 632 machine screws, so it's got a lot more quality feel going back together. Now, I'm not going to tighten them all the way yet. Because when you put the main case over, you want a little bit of flexibility. Mm. 
main cover and always notice the part that says one slice goes on the side with the little extension bar. Flip it over like that. And it's a bit on the springy side, so all right. I'm just going to use regular length wire for ah, idea. Yeah, regular length. Uh, machine screw on the side without the wire still trying not to touch the insides after having gotten it extremely hot <clears throat> all right <clears throat> so the next phase you'll want to <clears throat> get it clamped together and put these two in pick up your wire and i already pre-cut shorter screws to put here even though i'm going to knit all these screws a little shorter when it's over with um i didn't want to end up running the screw into the wire so I'm going to stop the camera and start back filming on final assembly. We've got all the screws in and clipped. So what we're going to do now is anyone who was watching closely would notice I did not pay attention to which side of the plug went to the hot and neutral. So... <clears throat> What we're going to do is turn on the meter for continuity, and we're going to uh, put one on the element. We need to put it on the engaged element. That's going to be hot. Okay. <clears throat> so, we've got our hot wire, and I'm going to bend it down. <clears throat> now we're going to feed this 
and the side without the groove that's the knob side this is cord side I'll push my wire through And then you're going to look for the adjustment and bingo. And I got my adjustment tuned in fairly well. So now it's got stops on it. And we can put the screws with the washers. They go on this side for the plastic. And the reason for that is, is you don't want the screw head to put too much concentrated pressure on the screw holes. And these don't have to be torqued down like lug nuts on a car. So just a little bit of pressure. And then these two. <coughs> Go on with the crumb tray. So we'll take the crumb tray. We'll place it here. We'll leave it slightly loose because we've got to put the two for the tensioner for the bimetallic contact which was way out of adjustment that's the reason this toaster did not function properly the toast would go down and every time it tried to go back up it started sparking and it was because this was backed out and it's a uh, left hand thread even though this is over the plastic this metal piece for the crumb tray acts as a washer pretty good one at that considering the gauge of the steel they used so tension up our crumb tray too tight All right, crumb tray Very nice. Alright, so all that's left to do is put the plug back on. <clears throat> Always remember to put this on first. side we marked as the hot and which one we didn't move which would be neutral you see I tend the tips of these wires too um, I don't like seeing fraying wires and switches. I just think this uh, takes 10-15 seconds to tend the wires once you get used to doing it. And having been in antique lighting for so long, it doesn't bother me to have to do that. And these always crank down real good. Make sure it's wrapped properly. This one is. Two 
screws in. Remember, you won't be able to find an antique plug with the hot neutral connections, one big, one small. But this is a pretty nice looking plug, and it'll do the trick. If you have one in the original cord, it's in excellent shape. You can always scratch an H and an N on the prongs after you test it. So, <clears throat> I got a nice 8 foot wire on here. And I'm going to plug it in. And if all went back together properly, we should be able to make toast. As you can see, all four elements are evenly working, and that's important. <clears throat> if an element's burning too hot in one area, the nichrome wire is probably going bad. Sorry about the tripod. Let's get it back for better view. It has a mechanism to keep the toast up until you lift it out. And that's pretty darn good for being 70 years old. So, thank you for watching. Um, restoration of the Sunbeam T20B from 1952 to 57. And again, this is the craziest workshop in Alabama. And this is Alex signing out. You have a good day.